my kids are outside playing right now, so I'm going to try and get through a video. And today what I was going to talk about was some secrets. Some people have been asking me what's some reef tank secrets. Um, to have a beautiful tank and to maybe avoid some of the pitfalls and downfalls of um, problems that you can have in the saltwater um, when you start a saltwater tank. Um, if you don't have patience with any kind of fish tank, I mean, none of us in this day and age have really good patience. We're in an instant society where you get things, you want things quickly, you want it done right, and you're not happy if it doesn't go the way you want it to. We're all quite spoiled, actually, I believe. But all that aside, if you don't have patience when you're trying to do this, you need to, I guess what I'm saying is enjoy every step Try and learn to enjoy every step of setting up your tank and don't lose patience because when you rush anything and change anything quickly in a reef or really even in a planted tank, often you can have disaster. So doing research and taking your time to ask questions and there are no stupid questions um, and planning is the biggest first thing and not having a disaster later is to do your research there's tons of videos that's why I never even started making videos before there's tons of videos out there I didn't think anybody would want the information that I have to offer and uh, most of the stuff I found out on the internet myself just by doing my own research and there's forums where you can ask questions and all that but to, to do your planning process carefully to begin with is a big thing in giving you success later and so my first piece of advice would be to, you know, to start out um, making a good solid plan for what size tank you want, what, what are you really wanting, are you wanting SPS, are you wanting LPS, you wanting softies, just a fish only, you know, what do you want and do some research about other people that have had success doing what you want. And my next Thing would be is after that you you decide what size tank and everything is to to get you some good quality rock um, there's pros and cons to having you know to start out with the dry rock um, base base rock uh, pick a good holy rock that has lots of holes and um, areas inside and outside for critters to hide in and for bacteria to you know take over on it and um, just start out right with good rock. You know, if you if you want to, this tank was actually started with all rock that wasn't wet. That it was all, it was pre cured, but it was not. You know, it was dry. I ordered it from a company. It came in the mail, which means that I would have to have more patience and let it cycle for a much longer period of time before I started adding things. Um, and I was willing to do that because I, I had started tanks in the past and had a lot of bad critters and, and bad problems with um, things. Because you can, I've set up tanks both ways and you can be successful both ways by going to a fish store, buying wet rock that's been cycled and stuff is growing on it and you get some great hitchhikers that way but you also can get some bad stuff. If they bought the rock from someone who broke down their tank because it was covered in hair algae or, you know, xenia or something that, uh, um, an invasive something, and it dies back and you don't realize that it's on that rock, you bring it home, put some light on that, and boom, you have their problem in your new tank. So, you know, if they just brought in fresh rock from uh, uh, a supplier, you might have better luck um, doing it that way. Most likely would be better. Um... But anyways, pick your rock careful. Real nice, good, lightweight, holy rock. Lots of holes in it. Um, there's all kinds of fancy rock out there, but um, your your rock is your skeleton for your artwork. To put to put it in a very nice, stable um, display so that you can put your corals on it and and have it grow to look and turn into something that looks natural and beautiful so start out with the right rock the second thing would be is good lights um, they don't have to be the most expensive lights but like I always choose shallow tanks so I don't have to go big on the lights I'll burn my corals up if I do you know I can go with some more inexpensive lights with these smaller shallow systems you know 40 breeders 
20 longs, 10 gallons, anything that's pretty shallow. Um, you don't have to go with those big, fancy, expensive, um, they're nice lights. I like them, um, the Kessels and all that. But you can get, if you're trying to do this on a budget and you want beauty on a budget, you know, the shallower tanks um, afford you more real estate lengthwise to put your, your rocks and your corals and it also um, it, it makes for a shallower tank so that you can not have to go with the big expensive lights. Um, the third thing would be to never skimp on your water. Um, don't use tap water. Don't use um, any kind of water unless it's RODI or distilled. That takes the whole factor out of when you're having problems in your tank. You know you're already using good water, good salt, and um, my top off water is distilled my mixing water is distilled and it takes the whole something getting into my tank from phosphates from the water out of the equation if I have a problem. Um, the next thing would be is to pick the right corals and fish um, and don't overstock. I know I have tons of corals in my tank and it's crammed full. I have a coral addiction. I'm working on it people. I'm sorry. But um, you know, but don't not overstock with things that you have to feed. You know, so go lightly on the fish and enjoy your corals. You know, pick some quality, good fish that you really, really want in your tank. Um, Spacing-wise is important. So, you know, I have a 20 long. I have three fish in here. I've always had three fish in here. And I feed lightly for them. I feed heavier for the corals. But um, just don't overstock. And, um, you know... Choose your corals and your fish carefully by doing a lot of research. There's not many fish that can go into these nano type tanks um, and be happy. So, um, again, um, you know, choosing the right corals and combinations of corals for your lights and that type of thing. Don't overfeed would be my next one. Um, we love to feed our pets, we love to watch them eat, we like to see them excited and go into a feeding frenzy. But um, I've always heard that the fish's stomach is about the size of their eye or that, they, 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 you know, they don't need that much. And I have found that they really do not need as much food as what we tend to give our pets. They don't need tons of food or even every day. But I do feed this tank every day. But the day I do a water change, I let them fast on Sundays. I stir a lot of stuff up. They're eating a lot of stuff that I've stirred up. And so Sundays I fast them and let them eat the crud that I stir up and I feed them every all the other days in this tank some other tanks I miss a day here or there on purpose because they're smaller tanks and I don't want to have trouble but um so you know don't overfeed them um, find the right balance for food um, this tank um, I do feed my corals a little something not spot feeding them either. I mean, you have a nano tank here. You don't want your corals to quickly outgrow your nano tank and you're constantly trimming and having to break corals off and replace them with something smaller. So, you know, I don't like to spot feed. And it also, I think it makes my phosphates go up. So I'll, we'll talk about feeding in another one. But anyways, don't overfeed. Um, don't impulse buy would be another one. Um, I've done it. I have, I'll admit. But... In the day and age that we live in where most people have smartphones, you can Google while you're standing there in the fish store and, and take your time and read some forums and read a few things about what you're getting so that you don't make a mistake for the sake of the animal or for the sake of the coral. I hate to see anything die when we're taking responsibility and bringing it home and that we want to see it do the best that it can do. Um, so, you know, while you're standing in the fish store, Google that thing that's so tempting to you and make sure that it's something that might not cause you problems later and I'm not just saying Google you know oh clownfish Google you know um, what's wrong with owning a clownfish you know the bad side read a few of the bad things and then read some of the good things and then make your make your decision you know as to what coral or what fish I always take a picture of my fish tank before I go to the fish store because I need to see my real estate and think when I buy a coral where am I gonna put that do I have a place for it um, you know can I do this should I do this? And so um, ha try and have a plan for it when I bring it home. Another very big and important thing of success in your tank is regular maintenance. You cannot get lazy um, and let it go and go and go. You will start having problems and you, and you won't stay on top of it. I cannot 
emphasize enough that regular weekly or bi-weekly maintenance of a water change and having your hands in your tank cleaning and have your hand on the pulse of your tank is so important to remove toxins and put fresh water in and you know get any algae out while it's starting before it takes over something and then you have a problem later you know neglect is just really can get on top of you quickly um, Another secret that people don't always think about is to help your cleanup crew. Before I clean my tank every Sunday, I get in there with tweezers and pick out bubble algae, you know. Um, I've never had a huge outbreak of anything because I try and stay on top of it. There's some algae I can't attack or do anything with, but if I see like two or three pieces of bubble algae together somewhere, I don't rush out and buy a crab to eat that. I take some tweezers and pull that out of there. And if I see some hair algae, if you trim that, don't trim it and let it float in your tank. But if you, you know, take your fingers and pinch it and make it shorter or trim it and let it suck up the siphon hose, the the crabs that you have in there can attack it easier and, and get on top of it and cut it down. I've had on tanks many, many, many years ago where I had long hair algae and nothing would eat it. And then when I trimmed it back and it was short, the crabs went right at it and got it and got on top of it and ate it down. So for some reason, they eat it when it's shorter, easier and we'll attack that easier, the, the snails and the crabs. Um, and I guess the last thing is just patience again. Patience, patience, patience. You know, um, I think also testing your water at first is a really big thing um, that we should do. Um, you know, once you get the pulse and the ins and outs of your tank and you really get to learn each other and you're learning what is a positive thing for your tank and what doesn't work and what, what kinds of things shift it so that it starts having algae problems you know once you get to really n learn your tank um i don't test hardly at all anymore but in the beginning i did I, I tested regularly and often because i needed to see where things were at and i don't change things quickly either you know like if i have one coral not doing well i don't change everything in my tank for that one coral to try and make it happy when 98 percent of the other corals are doing well and happy I might try cracking that off and moving that coral or, you know, doing something different with that coral. But I don't change every when everything is doing so well to, to just change the lighting for one coral or, you know, change everything to make one coral happy. I, I, I don't believe in doing that. But anyways, this was just a quick off the top of my head rundown of things that might be secrets of, to success for people who are starting out or who are having some issues and um, I hope it helps somebody. Like I said, there's tons of information on the information uh, on the internet, and so you know what what is my opinion. So you know, do some research. And um, this tank is over three years old, and it's been a joy to me. I, I enjoy all my ta all my tanks that I I work with, but um, I've learned a lot over the 15, 20 years that I've done fish tanks. And um, you know, this is a very simple set setup that works. Um, there's a lot of videos I've made about it on cleaning it and the equipment on it and it really has very little equipment on it um, just my lights my heater and my my filters and my water movement pretty much I guess is it so but um, y'all enjoy your tanks and I hope that you um, have happy reefing you know and, and enjoy your your reefs um, have a blessed day